Are you trying to dominate your fantasy football league? Do you want so many championship rings, it's impossible to sign autographs? Well, crack open a beer, pour yourself a glass of bourbon, and settle in, because you've come to the right place. Welcome to HammerCast. We're here to talk all things football, barbecue, bourbon, and beer. Welcome in to another episode of the HammerCast. Uh, Kenneth? Uh, our normal host uh, is not with us and neither is Chad. So this is going to be a solo show uh, for me tonight. And, uh, and I'm going to do something new and I'm going to do something different. We are, I am going to do a mock draft and I'm going to do something that I was, I was actually requested of uh, by several people, uh, mostly because they know me and they know I, 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 I do not believe in zero running back. I do not care for zero running back. It makes no sense to me, but they want to see it. They want to see my, my thoughts and how I would do it if I had to do it. So tonight we're going to do a zero running back mock draft. Now, some people do zero running back and that means they're drafting a running back in the third round or the fourth round. I'm not going to draft a running back at all until at least the fifth round. And so my first four picks are going to be anything but running backs. Uh, we are going to do this uh, on the fantasy pros mock draft room. And uh, it's going to be a, a super, it's going to be a, a super flex Two quarterbacks, uh, two running backs, three receivers, one tight end, and of course two flex spots and a, and the super flex spots. So that's the setup. It is a PPR league, and uh, that being said, let's see if I can just share the screen. All right, I've already got it mocked up. Uh, I did get the sixth pick, and uh, and the, the draft has already started. It's on my pick. And so we're not going to waste any time. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's great how the ADP and how the um, uh, expert consensus, uh, how, they, how they adjust and adapt based on the settings. Uh, here we got Christian McCaffrey, of course, number one. He's number one in every draft. But you had back-to-back -back quarterbacks, number two and three, Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, followed by Saquon Barkley and Zeke Elliott. So technically – at the one six spot, I'm, I'm licking my chops wanting to draft Alvin Kamara. Uh, but I'm not going to draft Alvin Kamara, even though he's right there for the taking, as is Alvin Cook and Derrick Henry. Uh, but you know what? I am going zero running back. So remember, this is purely fiction. The chance of me doing this is the chance of finding a unicorn riding on a Bigfoot. So uh, anyway, keep that in mind. But you know what? You wanted it. We're doing it. Uh, the the no-brainer, auto smash. Michael Thomas is right there. Going to smash him right there. Michael Thomas was taken. Man, I got a top – of course, I love it when they said you got the uh, – that was a top player taken on the board. So, uh, once again, a lot of running backs just went off the board, and it just makes me cringe. Uh, Cook, Kamara, Derrick Henry. And, look, already Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, uh, based on the news yesterday, his ADP has already risen. He went 2-3. Uh, uh, Eckler, Jacobs. Uh, oh, you see three more quarterbacks already off the board. Uh, I'm going zero running back, so we already know that I don't need to even bother looking at them. So let's think about this. We still got Deshaun Watson out there. Uh, I consider him the last elite quarterback available. Uh, so, you know, you got to have two of them. Let me see what we got at receiver. Oof, I really, really, really like Tyreek Hill. Uh, the idea of starting with Michael Thomas and Tyreek Hill. Mm. Yeah, and yes, I do. I'm going to say it. I got Tyreek Hill over Chris Godwin. Uh, you guys have watched all my videos. I like Chris Godwin. I just don't like him as much as I do Tyreek Hill. I think that Kansas City offense is going to be amazing. And I think Tyreek Hill is going to be the stud of that offense. And I am taking Tyreek Hill. Michael Thomas, Tyreek Hill, back to back. And here we come back around. All right, third, third pick. I'm at 3-6, you know, and, and it's, just, it's just, this is so funny because everybody that knows me, I, I know Kenneth and Chad and all those guys, they're watching, they're watching this video and they're saying, oh, my God, he's got to take Gurley. He's got to take Gordon. He's got to take Jonathan Taylor right now because Jonathan Taylor's right there and available. But I can't do it. I can't do it. Not when I got guys like Allen Robinson on the board or Kenny Galladay or even Juju Smith-Schuster. But look at my boy, DJ Moore and Mike Evans. They're both sitting there. Uh, you got to start three receivers in this league. 
I'm going balls to the wall. I'm taking the guy that I think is going to finish top five. I think the, the game script is big. Uh, I'm taking DJ Moore as my wide receiver three. And so, you know, it's, you know, I've got the, the number one guy on, on their respective teams with Michael Thomas, Tyreek Hill, DJ Moore. I think they're all going to be peppered with targets. They're all going to be right up there uh, with targets. All right, we're back down to 4-7. And I'm moving through this pretty quick. 4-7, uh, once again, I'm going to completely avoid the running back position. And that means, let me just take a look here. You still got Zach Ertz. You still got Mark Andrews. Uh, this is PPR. I think Zach Ertz, <laughs> a lot of people don't realize this. Last year, even with Goddard playing and, and, and them playing that 12 personnel as much as they did, Zach Ertz still had more targets himself than 26 NFL teams combined tight end targets. A lot of people don't realize this. Last year, even with Goddard playing and, and, and them playing that 12 personnel as much as they did, Zach Ertz still had more targets himself than 26 NFL teams combined tight end targets. A lot of people don't realize this. Last year, even with Goddard playing and, and, and them playing that 12 personnel as much as they did, Zach Ertz still had more targets himself than 26 NFL teams combined tight end targets. Uh, that kind of volume, that kind of production does not go away. I think that they still got receiver questions. Zach Ertz in the, four, the later half of the fourth round, uh, I'm jumping on him. All right, so a lot of receivers are going off the board right now. But you know what? I've got Thomas Hill and more. And so as a matter of fact, everything that just went off the board, the last five, 10 picks were all receivers. I'm not worried about that, am I? I mean, it actually panned out pretty good. A running back hasn't been taken since 4-1. So, but I promised, oh, did I say fifth round? I think I did. Um, and so, but I'm not. I'm going to wait till the sixth round before I take a running back. Uh, let me take a look at the quarterbacks now. Uh, I don't, you know what, guys? I'm going to go ahead and take a quarterback here. I'm taking Matthew Stafford. Uh, he's healthy. He's got a, a very comp, a very good complement of receivers, some weapons. Uh, I, I think people are overlooking uh, what DeAndre Swift is going to be able to do in that offense. Uh, I've got to do it. I'm taking uh, my first quarterback here, Matt Stafford. All right, so here we are. We are in the sixth round. I don't have a running back. I went ahead and nailed Michael Thomas, Tyreek Hill, DJ Moore. I got a really high quality, what I think is a top three tight end in Zach Ertz. And then I picked up Matt Stafford. I'm going to take a look at the running back room. Still got guys like Le'Veon Bell. I, I don't like Le'Veon Bell. Uh, I, don't, I don't like Le'Veon Bell. Um, but you got Melvin Gordon. You got James Conner. You got David Johnson. You got David Montgomery. But look what I got. I got Jonathan Taylor sitting right there. I'm a big believer in Jonathan Taylor. Do I think he's going to come back to me if I, if I pass on him? <sighs> this is a tough one. These guys know how much I like him, but do I want him to be my number one? I, you know what? I'm taking Jonathan Taylor. I don't, I don't, you know what? That's what we're doing here. Oh, and look at all the running backs that just went by that I was hoping to pick up. Um, so here we are in the seventh round. I still have a really nice selection of, of, of a few running backs here. You know, I forgot to even say uh, what I was drinking on tonight. I'm drinking on some Tito's with some orange Red Bull and a little orange juice. And so anyway, enjoy boys and girls. Okay, so I still got a few running backs here. I got Kareem Hunt, Raheem Mostert, who just signed a new, a new deal. James White, Cam Akers, DeAndre Swift, Cohen, uh, but there's one guy here, uh, you know, we're going zero running back. I'm going for upside. It's the seventh round. Uh, I'm taking him. I'm taking Darius Geis. Darius Geis can be a league winner, guys. He's totally cleared, totally healthy. Uh, I know he's going to get the ball. I know they really like him. He has the potential to be a top three, a top a, a quarter, a running back that should go in the top three rounds. And here we are uh, almost in the eighth round. So I'm going to pair him up with Jonathan Taylor. And now I've got my two starting running backs in a zero running back offense. And you know what? 
yeah, I don't have a Mixon or, a, or an Austin Eckler or one of those guys, but both Jonathan Taylor and Darius Geis have I, what I believe is pretty good upside. So it's not as horrible <laughs> as I thought it would be, uh, but it definitely doesn't taste good. Uh, but you know what? That's what I'm doing. And uh, you know what? I'm actually kind of liking this roster. Uh, so here we are. We're in the eighth round. You know, dare I? Dare I go ahead and take another running back here? Or uh, should I just get back into the, uh, the zero running back theme? But, you know, I did, I did wait till the sixth round. Uh, I still see some really good receivers. I don't have any reserve receivers. Uh, Christian Kirk is a guy that I really like. Marvin Jones is a guy that I really like. We did an ESPN mock draft the other day, and both those guys, it was a tough decision. We went with Christian Kirk, and, uh, and I just really believed in the argument that was made for Christian Kirk. I believe that he's going to have a lot of mismatches, uh, and that offense is going to be a lot better than it was last year. And so to be able to have a guy like that to use for bye week fill-ins uh, really, really is, is going to work for me. So I'm going to go ahead and take Christian Kirk right here. And look at the tight ends go off the board. Four of them just went. So here we are, ninth round already. And uh, I'm looking at the receivers. A lot of, see, that's the thing is there's so many deep receivers. Uh, but you know what? I got three that I really, really like. Uh, let me look at the, the quarterbacks, super flex. I still got Tannehill and Kirk Cousins up there. Still a lot of quarterbacks. I'm not going there. You guys know I hate drafting quarterbacks. Um, I'm going back to running back. I mean, here we are. We're in the ninth round. I need that backup. Uh, I, I still see Raheem Mostert right there. I really like Raheem Mostert. Jordan Howard. Three, you know what? We're in the ninth round. I'm taking Mostert. I think he's the most talented running back. This is a redraft league. Uh, I'm taking Mostert. So I've got a backup running back. And not a, just one running back went since. And so um, we're sitting there, we're looking at Tariq Cohen, Ronald Jones. Uh, by the way, news just came out a couple of hours ago. Ronald Jones uh, might not get the amount of uh, playing time that we thought he was going to get. They just signed Shady McCoy in Tampa Bay. And so now they've got a mess in their running back room. They got LaShawn McCoy. They got Ronald Jones. They got Keyshawn Vaughn. They got Dari Ogunobolawe. Uh, they've got a whole lot of different guys that they're going to try to play around and see. You know, Ultimately, I think Tom Brady is going to make the decision, and it's going to be who he's most comfortable with, not only from a pass protection, but someone that he feels confident in the passing game. So uh, I believe McCoy does have an opportunity to get on the field early and often because of his veteran presence. And, uh, and so we'll see where that goes. In other words, I'm staying away from all Tampa Bay Buck running backs, period. And so, you know what? I really like Jordan Howard here. Uh, he's going to be the primary ball carrier. He did a whole lot of good things last year. If I had to take a running – you know what? Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm taking Jordan, I'm taking Jordan Howard. So now I've got – you know, my two running backs, I got the two backups, and I didn't even grab one until the sixth round. So between Taylor and Geis, Mostert and Howard, I've got uh, what I feel are four late round quarter, mid to late round running backs that, uh, that I can count on during the season. Uh, back to me, uh, it's super flex. It's time to get that second quarterback. And it's interesting here because a lot of people are hyping up Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, he's still available. You know, here we are in the 11th round in a super flex league. Gardner Minshew. What I really like about Gardner Minshew is his stats weren't too far off from Kyler Murray. And, uh, and he actually had a top five rushing uh, quarterback performance last season, and he still missed a few games. Uh, so he does have a better floor when it comes to being able to run the ball. I think the team is going to be awful. And I think they're, they're all, their defense is completely depleted. They're going to be coming from behind. Their game script is going to be one that he's going to have to uh, make some plays, and, and if he has to make them with his legs, he has to make them with his legs. If he has to, um, uh, you know, dump the ball off to Fournette like he did last year, uh, he'll do that. They got they also got um, uh, Thompson, and so they got a lot of opportunities. He's going to have a lot of weapons, and so um, I'm taking Gardner Minshew. So now I got two, my two running, my two quarterbacks. 
and it comes back down to us. And it just looks look. This is this draft is really fun to watch because it's really all based on runs. We just literally had another five, another ten out of the last twelve picks were all running backs. And so, but you know what? I already got mine, even though I'm doing a zero running back draft strategy. So we're in the twelfth round. Uh, this is where I'm going to continue to take those position players, tight ends, and receivers. Uh, there's a guy here I really, really like. And, and as a matter of fact, he just got a lot of praise from his coach. Uh, Curtis Samuel, uh, he's going to be playing in that, that high-flying offense. I think they're going to have a lot of uh, production with Joe Brady as their um, offensive coordinator. And so I've got Golden Tate. Preston Williams, I really like Preston Williams, but he's coming off an ACL uh, injury. And, uh, and we don't know what's going on with the quarterback situation there. you got Devontae Parker, Mike Gesicki. I mean, they just drafted or just traded for another uh, tight end. Uh, I just don't know what all's going on. I actually believe that offense is going to lean towards the running game. They've got two good running backs, uh, in, including Jordan Howard and Matt Breda. Uh, I'm taking Curtis Samuel. I think he's the best player on the board. I think he's going to get a lot of targets. I think he could do a lot of things. And he's a great person to have for a bye week fill in. So I, I'm grabbing Curtis Samuel. And we're down to pick 13. I've already got a pair of quarterbacks. I've got a stud tight end. I've got amazing, you know, when, when, when Christian Kirk and Curtis Samuel are your bench receivers, uh, I've got Raheem Mostert and Jordan Howard as bench running backs. The team's actually forming out pretty nicely. Uh, still looking at the receivers here. I'm going to take another quick peek at the running backs. Naheem Hines, Boston Scott. Boston Scott is interesting to me. Uh, A.J. Dillon. There's the Chris Thompson. I was talking about him with Jacksonville. There was one guy I was going to look for, and it looks like he was already taken. Uh, I was going to try to grab a Duke Johnson or a Tony Pollard, but they just both went. And so none of these guys really excite me, except maybe Boston Scott. I think he really, really uh, is going to play a part of that offense. I, I don't think they're going to give Miles Sanders the three back, the three down back uh, bell cow roll. I think he's going to be, uh, you know, 60, 40, maybe, maybe 75, 25. I don't know. Um, at this point, I'm, I got to go for upside. I'm going back to the receivers. Uh, I'm looking at um, Robbie Anderson, Rashard Perriman. Don't like the Jets. I do like Robbie Anderson. Uh, either him or Curtis Samuel could really uh, break out. But here's a guy that I really like. He's going to be playing in the slot position for the for the Colts. They got the best offensive line. They got the most continuity within their offensive line. They got Phillip Rivers. He's going to have the best offensive line he's had in six years, and he loves throwing to that slot receiver. He he was Keenan Allen, Keenan Allen's best friend, and Paris Campbell's going to take that slot role. They've already called it. They said he's healthy, he's ready to roll, and he's very fast. And so Paris Campbell could be one of those guys that really sneakily jumps up and has an amazing sophomore season. And, uh, and I've got a great deep bench in receivers, and so I can afford to put him on there. And if he does blow up, maybe I could trade him. And so I'm going to go ahead and draft Paris Campbell. I really like him. And we're coming back around. And we're only doing 16 rounds. Uh, so we're on round 14. Uh, I've got – Six receivers. I've got four running backs, two quarterbacks, one tight end. Maybe see if there's another tight end up here I can take. Typically, I'll just take one tight end and stream the rest. But I'm sitting here in the 14th round, and there's Noah Fant, uh, Dallas Goddard, Hawkinson, Hoop. You know what? I don't have many shares of him at all. And I know he's going to be the number one guy. But Austin Hooper looks really good right there. And um, in Stefanski, uh, when he has a quality tight end, he goes to that quality tight end a lot. And so uh, I think Hooper is going to be the guy. I still believe they're going to trade in Joku. So I'm going to draft Austin Hooper. He's very athletic. He's got the big contract. They went after him. So as a backup tight end, I'm really happy with having him uh, to back up Ertz. So it comes back down to the 15th round, and my goodness <laughs> – Another eight running backs went off the board. Even uh, Jarek McKinnon, Joshua Kelly, Chris Thompson. And so uh, if let's just take a look at the running back room. You got Giovanni Bernard, Raquel Armstead, Jalen Richard, Malcolm Brown, Benny Snell. I'm just wanting to kind of throw up in my mouth a little bit. There's really, there's really nothing there. Actually, actually, 
there's a guy I'm going to pick, uh, DeAndre Washington. DeAndre Washington is going to be uh, the second. He's going to be the pass catching back. He's he's he's. They got to throw the ball. To, they got to use somebody else in Kansas City now that they traded away, uh, or Damian Williams opted out. Uh, they're not going to leave it just to, uh, you know, Ceh. And so DeAndre Washington, what a lot of people don't realize, DeAndre Washington actually played in college for two seasons with Pat Mahomes. As a matter of fact, they had a lot of stats together, and so they know each other very well. Uh, the so-called shower narrative that you would hear from Adam Leventon. So anyway, uh, DeAndre Washington is still available. He's attached to Patrick Mahomes. Uh, they're not going to let one rookie be, get all the carries. Uh, I really like this, getting a guy like that in the 15th round. So uh, could be a league winner, especially if something happens to the rookie. So here we are, Mr. Irrelevant. We're in a 16th round. I've got two quarterbacks. It is a super flex league. It doesn't hurt to have three quarterbacks in a super flex. As a matter of fact, you need three quarterbacks. Um, most of them are all off the board. You've got uh, Mitch Trubisky. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do Herbert. But there is a chance, you know, I, I, I'm going to take Jarrett Stidham. I'm, <laughs> I know Kenneth is going to like this pick, Hammerconda, because Jarrett Stidham is – they really like him. Uh, he got all the he got all the, the preseason reps last year. He's a great player. Uh, he had a tough situation. We don't know what Cam's going to do. We don't know how he's going to perform. Uh, and 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 honestly, his injury history. Uh, I like the way Bill Belichick makes it work with whoever he has. And so why not take a flyer on a guy like Jarrett Stidham, who still could win the job. I, it's doubtful, but you know what? We'll see what happens. But why not have him? So there you have it. There's my draft. I did get a score out of here, uh, B minus. Uh, you know, it, it could have been a lot worse uh, going zero running back. But you know what? Uh, when I really look at it with Matt Stafford, Gardner Minshew, that's probably where I'm going to get beat up the most is those uh, quarterbacks and running backs. Uh, ideally, you don't, want, you don't want Jonathan Taylor as your RB1. Uh, I have him in a lot of leagues as an RB3. RB2 sometimes, RB4, uh, but, but I love the upside of both him and Darius Geis. But when you look at those wide receivers, Michael Thomas, Tyreek Hill, DJ Moore, and then you throw Zach Ertz out there, and you got these guys like Christian Kirk, Raheem Mostert uh, in your flex with Jordan Howard, and, and, and then you got your bench, Curtis Samuel, Paris Campbell, Austin Hooper, DeAndre Washington, and Jarrett Stidham. You know what, guys? It's not the best lineup in the world, but – it's my first attempt at a zero running back draft. And you know what? It's not, it's not my thing, but you know what? I don't think it's that bad. As a matter of fact, you know, anything in the B's, A's or B's, is considered a pretty good draft when you're going against the expert consensus. And so the fact that we were able to get uh, a score in the B's, drafting zero running back, and it's actually the first time I've even taken a stab at drafting zero running back. And so anyway – that's my, my take on it. Uh, maybe I'll do another one or two. Uh, I really enjoyed doing this. I hope you liked it as much as I, I did. And uh, uh, if you have any other suggestions, what you want to see us do, uh, any kind of draft or any kind of unique rules or scoring uh, settings, let us know. Be sure and like, subscribe, click on the little bell, and, uh, and let us know what you think. We appreciate you, and uh, we'll see you out next time. Peace out. Did you get all that? If not, make sure you head over to HammerCast.com. Subscribe and join the Hammer Nation. Until next time, keep grinding.